All right, in that last video, we touched a bit upon how that code we wrote in the update method worked. But in this video, we'll better understand how the update method within the script component attached to the game object actually drives changes that we see in that game object. We'll also try to get a better general concept of what it means to say changes are occurring on the screen. So once again, everything here is a primer in order to get you ready to understand how all of the code we will be writing in the coming videos will be interpreted within Unity and our game world. If a lot of it doesn't make sense, it's supposed to not make total sense at this, at this point, not yet. So just stay with me and try to you know, glean as much information as you can. I think it will be helpful going forward, but we will revisit these concepts over and over again as we move forward. So first off, it's important to understand that every game, regardless of if it looks static or if it looks like a lot of things are moving, creates the illusion of motion by rapidly drawing on your screen individual discrete frames, one after the other. Each frame may or may not have some things changed, but regardless whether or not there are changes, the screen is always constantly being updated or redrawn and if there are changes, those changes happen quick enough that it fools your brain into thinking there is a moving and dynamically changing world. Now, I purposefully emphasize the word update or updated because, surprise, this is primarily handled by the update method in Unity that we have been putting most of our code into thus far. The update method runs over and over again. It runs exactly once per frame. So a common target frame rate for games is roughly 60 frames per second. If our game runs at a steady 60 frames per second, that means our update method would have run like a loop 60 times within that second. So that's important. It's a very key concept because most of the code we'll be writing will be in the update method. So try to visualize and think about that as much as you can going forward. Each single frame is rendered by a single run through of the previous update method. If there are changes to the scene on any of these frames, the stitching of these frames together is what creates the illusion of motion. But make no mistake, each frame is completely static and stationary. So can you think of anything that sounds like that in your experience? That's right, movies, or actually, you know, any, any video footage for that matter. All video is just a series of frames, one after the other, comprised of still images that when run fast enough produces that very same illusion of, of motion. So to illustrate this effect and relate it to how updates work in, in a game world, I'm going to recreate a, a, a famous scene from a movie starring Johnny Depp. I think you all know the movie, it's, it's called uh, Parrots of the Carby Beans. I, I may have said that kind of quick, but I, I think you probably heard that right. Anyways, the resolution's not that great in, in this video, so you may not be able to tell, but you, you can trust me, that, that's definitely Johnny Depp right there. So here's a famous scene from Johnny Depp in the movie where he dramatically confronts this old man eyeing his uh, treasure chest. So you can see that treasure chest right behind Johnny Depp right there. And you see, it looks like Johnny is moving on his skateboard from the left over to the right. But when we take each still frame, you'll actually see that it's just a bunch of still shots stitched together. Now you may wonder what's making Johnny Depp, the real world Johnny Depp, not my recreation of him, but the real Johnny Depp, move. How does Johnny Depp as an object move before the result is captured on the next frame of the video camera reel? Well, of course, Johnny Depp is making Johnny Depp move, right? Somewhat magically here on his skateboard, it seems, kind of an odd directorial choice, I have to say, but that's what the director chose, so I'm just going along with it. But how does that actually happen? How does that motion happen in general? Well, nobody really knows entirely how that happens, but suffice to say, it starts somewhere in the brain. So you can imagine that Johnny's brain is running something like an update loop. Stay, stay with me here, it's, I think it's going to be illustrative. And that update loop in Johnny's brain is making calculations and sending out information to his body to change his state, for him to move you know, this way or that way. 
Now, these calculations in the real Johnny Depp's brain happen much faster than 60 discrete intervals per second. I'm, I'm sure Johnny Depp is a reasonably intelligent guy, so that's why I say that. But let's, for the sake of simplicity, say it runs at the same rate as the capture device. So Johnny's Johnny Depp's brain loop, as it were, is running at 60 frames per second, or 60 times per second, or every 60th of a second. Now, let's look at what that would look like, frame by frame, slowed way down, all right? So there's Johnny Depp. He's an object with a brain script running this sort of update loop, which may or may not change his state incrementally every 1 60th of a second. And then the result of that state change, or not, is captured and sent off to display as a picture of a single frame for you to see at the same rate of one frame every 1 60th of a second. So we're slowing this way down so you can see what's happening in Johnny Depp's brain update before it passes it off, the result of it, off to the movie frame. All right, there we go. Something made Johnny Depp move in that script. So he's gonna budge a bit on the next frame. And it's by accumulating these changes over successive frames that we get, you know, a dramatic scene to play out, such as the famous scene from Parrots of the Carby Beans. And in case it wasn't clear, the analogy here is that Johnny Depp is your game object, while his brain running the update loop, changing the state of the Johnny Depp object, in memory in this case, is the attached script with the update method. And the camera capturing the results and displaying them on the, onto uh, visible frames is something like your graphics card and screen monitor. Okay, so abstract analogies are all well and good, but let's try to bring this back to Unity and using Unity's visuals to better understand here what's happening in Unity using similar um, visual uh, description. So I made another illustration here. Bear with me in my illustrations. I, I hope they help. Okay, so on the left, we have a visual that shows the code in the update method executing in slow motion. You see each line is being examined by the computer. One line is being read one at a time. And the update method is run full once and is ready to hand off the results of what happened to the computer to draw on the next frame. This all happens in 1 60th of a second, if it's 60 frames per second again, very, very quickly, but we're slowing it way down. And on the right, we see the results of the changes of this update method, whether or not there were changes on the previous run through of the update loop. Something may or may not have changed in that run through of the update method, but nonetheless, it's gonna be drawn to the next frame. And on we move onto the very next frame, the update method starts again from the top and works its way down. Remember, it's going in a loop. And now we'd see a change. An input has been read on those lines of code and the object moves by the amount specified, a very small amount. And that is drawn on the very next frame. All right, this hopefully all makes sense to you, but you may still be wondering, how does the update method communicate with the game object? How does this update method in this script actually send messages to, in this case, in our game, the cube game object, for example, in the way that Johnny Depp's brain sends messages for him to gradually change his state over time? When we look at our game object here in the inspector, remember it has components attached here to the right. These components sort of become the properties of this object's instance. This particular game object has these properties, a transform, a cube, mesh filter, box collider, mesh renderer, and the script. And in code, we can access many of these properties with their default names. So for example, the transform component can be accessed as a property in the code just by typing in transform. So we're gonna type here just to show anywhere in the code, it doesn't matter transform and that property relates exactly to the game object of which this script that I'm writing transform in is attached to. 
And then from there, by hitting the dot ac accessor, period, in other words, you can access constituent properties, such as the position, right? We all looked at that and we we're quite familiar with that by now. We also have rotation and so on, right? Position, rotation, we have scale as well. So that's how we're able to write code and access those transform properties of our game object. If this script wasn't attached to this game object, typing in transform would have no meaning. So that's the special relationship between scripts being attached to game objects have. Okay, so a lot of concepts in this video, really concept heavy, I, I totally understand that. But I think it will help you see what's happening as we move forward. Hopefully this will give you a clear sense on how the parts relate. All I want for you is to get comfortable with the idea of how the update method in your script connects to your game object and changes its state to be rendered on the next frame displayed on your screen. screen. That's the most important takeaway and key concept. Again, don't get you know too fixated on any one thing at this stage. If you kind of understood what was being discussed in this video, you know, feel free to think about it, rewind the tape as it were, or just let it go and know that you'll be coming back to this idea over and over again. Okay, so don't sweat it and uh, we'll, we'll get right back to coding in the next video. See you there.